James, thanks for doing this interview with me. Um, we'll get straight into it. Um, you went to school at RBAI, one of the biggest schools for rugby in Northern Ireland, and you were part of the squad that won three consecutive schools cups. Um, how special is that memory to you? Uh, thanks for having me on as well, Sam. Um, yeah, no, RBAI, that was, in, in, was a great seven years, and, you know, the standard of rugby was obviously real good throughout, and, there's a real difference between the fifth year lower sixth and upper sixth wins, to be honest, because fifth year we were underdogs, lower sixth we were underdogs, and then upper sixth we were we were the favourites, we were expected to win. So um yeah, fifth year and lower sixth were, were, were really good years because I think it's almost better when you're underdogs and you're not really expected to win, especially the the Wallace team we came up against in fifth year, they had fourteen Ulster Schools players and we had we didn't have any at the time. Uh, and then lower sixth, the Campbell team was stacked and there was so much hype around that all year and stuff. So to beat them was amazing. Um, I wouldn't change anything, to be honest. Um, it was probably one of the best best years of your life and you don't even realise it until you, until you leave. The buzz in the school as well, it must be hiding even after you win and before you go. That was amazing, especially before the games. It started this thing where we would have a team meeting in like the, I can't remember what the block's called. I should know that. G block maybe. And you walk down the main stairs of the school and out the back gates and like, well, it was probably a thousand people. A thousand people kept like a, a corridor the whole way up to the back gate where the, where the bus was with like, f- with horns and clapping and screaming. So it was amazing. I'll be a memory you want to keep. Um, in 2018, you signed your first senior contract with Ulster. Um, how did that news come to you? What was your reaction when you heard that? Um, well, I was going, I started playing some, started getting some appearances, and I was about, I think, six or seven caps in. Uh, and then uh, I was speaking to my agent, Dan Humphreys, and he was like, I think they're going to offer you, you know, a development or a senior contract this year. So that was awesome, and it just gave me that motivation to put the head down, knowing that you know I'll be going up again, and and that I'm seen as a player with potential coming through. Um, so no, that was class, ecstatic. It was really nice to do it with uh, with Maggie Laurie and uh, Eric O'Sullivan as well. So you scored your first try against the two Cheetahs in South Africa. And despite the result, how special was it to you getting that try? Ah, oh, that was some game, like. Um, yeah, no, it was great to get the try, obviously, but I, I was so punctured, I can't really put into words how tired I was. Um, the altitude out there is is unbelievable, and I think the Cheetahs were coming off a, a Curry Cup win, like they'd won the whole thing, so they were fresh, fresh as a daily. So, yeah, we were, we were getting absolutely hooked. It was great to get it, obviously, great feeling, um, but. You know, you don't really concentrate on your first try when you get absolutely hooked by a South Africa team like that. At the end of the October 20, 2019, also we were playing Cardiff at home. And in the opening minutes of the game, I remember you. I was at that game. You went down injured just in front of me. And it happened to be quite a long-term injury. And how disappointing was this to you, especially you were just beginning to get many starting appearances? That was definitely the lowest part of my short career to date because I think so. I had my foot injury at academy and then I broke my ankle before the Leinster quarterfinal the year before that. Yeah. Rehabbed, got back real quick, get good games together. I was feeling really good, playing well, and then um, tore tore my hamstring off the bone. So. I was a sur- I got surgery in London two days after, and then it was a four month man from then. Um, no, I was I was in tears. Not afraid to say it. I was I when I heard the news that I had to get surgery and it was going to be the surgeon said six months originally, but I got back in four. But I just burst out crying. I was absolutely distraught. It was just the worst the worst feeling ever. And you know what? There's nothing. I, it takes you like a couple of hours, and then. You have to just look at yourself and be like, oh, "There's nothing I can do. The only thing I can do is get back, get stronger, get fitter." 
you know, it's it's unfortunate, but you know, touch wood, I haven't had any injuries this year, and I've got a good string of games together. So hopefully that continues. We'll go back to last season's campaign. He's reached the final against Leinster. How special moment was that for you? Yeah, it was great. Um, it it kind of came, it kind of sprung upon me because I didn't obviously play that. I played very little of that Pro 14 season, so I ended up just playing those two games after the restart. Obviously, a great semi-final win in Edinburgh, thanks to Ian Madigan as well. Um, and then that final was was a great experience. <coughs> I just remember running out, <coughs> and uh, <coughs> I think we were kicking off, and I just looked at the team. And there was just like Ireland internationals I'd been watching for years, and it was just like this is so surreal. Um, and to have to, to get blooded like that, at, you know, I was twenty one, so um, that was great, great experience. Obviously, the result was didn't go our way, but yeah. You opened the score, and in the final, um, you ran from I'm sure a good sixty yards. Um, as you were running for the line, what was going through your head? It's one of those ones you don't really remember. Um, it was so blur at the moment. <clears throat> I like. I said to Treads before the game that I think they're kind of vulnerable on that bit between like where we run that forward pod. So I just tried it first play, and there was obviously a huge gap. Um, and then after I broke the line, I don't really remember until I stood up and started screaming and celebrating. Uh, it was all uh, all natural, mate. All natural. Well, we can tell you, despite the result, I can remember the atmosphere in the house and then all over Facebook. It was brilliant. Um, but so far in your Ulster career, you've made 30 appearances with 15 points. Did you ever imagine this moment or dream it? Um, it had always been a goal. You know, my dad had it said to me from when I was younger that, you know, I, you know, I was in like good many rugby and as you got into school, like it was just like a constant path to get to where I am. Now, I obviously am not anywhere near where I want to be. I'm, you know, want to play Ireland, want to get Lions. You know, that's that's the long term goal. But um, I wouldn't have pictured being. 30 appearances in for Ulster at the age of 22, definitely not. Um, and I think that's a credit also to like the Dan McFarlane, who just, you know, he's blooded the young players. He's got, you know, the likes of me, Mikey, Tom, and the, and the likes, you know, a bit of game time confidence at that level. Um, and, you know, I've played like two year, three European games now against European giants. And that's the type of experience that, that you need going forward. Um, to get blooded at such a young age is, is class. Especially, you see, now that you've established yourself in the team, you see more young players coming through, like Ethan Michael and Ben Moxham. Do you see them following in the same way as you came up? Yeah, definitely. Like, you know, they, they just get blooded. Like, Moxie's first appearance was calling it away. Um, you just get thrown in at the deep end and you're expected to know your stuff and you're expected to perform and obviously he did so he gets kept on and that's just the way the way it goes if you if you put a solid marker down your first uh, first couple of appearances and especially Ethan as well he played that Leinster away game last year and tore up and then every game he's played this year he's you know he's beating defenders he's winning high ball he's, he's really standing out so you know you can't give um, Dan a reason to drop you and if you don't then you know he sees you in a good light um, as you were saying, your aim is to play for Ireland. You have represented them, but an under twenty level, you've represented them seven times, and that's included the under twenty World Cup. And um, what was it like playing at a World Cup, even at an under twenty level? Um, our twenty year was. Um, I I personally didn't enjoy it just because of I came back from my foot injury during the Six Nations, and then I didn't play well, um, and then we got hooked by England. Like 50 points to 10 or something like that and then went to the World Cup and we had loads of injuries Angus Curtis who I lived with he what did he do I think he got concussed and had to, he was out and then Tom O'Toole did his MCL and he was out so I had no like I had a couple of like close friends there but like 
you know, it was it was different with them not there. Um, and then obviously we lost, like we lost five from six. So it's hard when you're <clears throat> when you're out in France for three three and a half weeks and you're not seeing family and you're losing pretty much every game you play. So like it was a bit of a weird experience. It was uh, again, it was a good experience. It was good learning curve, good stepping stone. But personally, didn't enjoy it as much as I would have liked to. Well. Six Nations is just around the corner. Um, do you hope to be in contention to make Andy Farrell squad? Ah, uh, tough one. There's so, there's so many good centers in Ireland. Um, you know, Ringrose and Henshaw and Aki, and then like you know when McCluskey's on the brink of getting into a squad, then I'm going to be behind that. You know, because Stu's Stu's obviously a great player. And then you have Chris Farrell. Tom Daly's playing well for Connacht now at the minute. So, and you still have Tom Farrell, who's been injured for a while. He's a cracking player. So, I'm I'm young. I'll I'll I understand if you know I'm not I'm not in a squad. It's not not going to be the end of the world. I've still got years ahead of me. But no, it'll be it'll be great even to get into the development, but the extended squad just to see what get a taste of what it's really like. But um, you know, I'd be very surprised if I went into it this year. Um, Need to probably get a couple more good European um, performances and keep firing away in the Pro 14. So here's hoping you get that phone call in a couple of weeks. Um, on a game day, would you have any rituals you like to stick to? Sleep, sleep, and sleep. That's all I do in game day. Pretty, pretty boring. But we go on like an away trip, and you know, if it's a seven thirty kickoff, I get up breakfast we'd have a walk through lunch and then i'd sleep for about four hours in the afternoon so i don't really do much to be honest i just sleep and relax that's all i can do when you were growing up playing rugby um who was your idol it's a tough one you know i suppose it's not something you really think about when you're no just on you no, you well, I, like from watching, you know, because I was a centre, kind of loved watching Ryan Um He was an absolute machine. Um, obviously, like I thought, Brian O'Driscoll was great. Um, yeah, probably my Anonu. I loved, always loved watching him. I think it was just a novelty because of his hair and stuff. I was like, this guy's... This guy's fun to watch, and he's obviously class. So, yeah, probably my honour I'll go for. When you were younger, did you play any other sports as well as rugby? Yeah, uh, I was Irish standard swimmer till I was fourteen. So I I had to actually choose between I had to choose between cricket, rugby, and swimming. But rugby was the prominent one. Um, I was doing Irish stuff for swimming and. Ulster squads and that, and then cricket played like Northern Irish cricket up until I was 15 as well. Um, so from then on, kind of had to choose rugby because we were getting into medallion years and fifth year, lower six, upper six. So I really needed to knuckle down. In hindsight, I kind of wish I kept swimming on a wee bit, not competitively, because for fitness it was so good. Like I was the fittest in our year and first year and second year and stuff and then as I stopped it just started to go downhill as I started getting bigger and stuff so yeah no I kind of wish I kept that on but no I'm grateful because you know I don't really believe in specialization when you're younger you know focusing on one sport just try to do everything get good at everything um when playing a match who would you say is the toughest opposition player you've came up against um Guy Ringrose is very tough He's just a very smart player. Um, if you just watch his game, he just he's constantly like jittery. He's you know he knows what he's doing. Very smart guy. Um, trying to think who else notable. Um, Deaton and Peter Aki from Toulouse were ho- especially Toulouse away were horrible to play against. Um, not my position, but uh, Dupont. Both games we played them, and obviously Colby. Were ridiculous. Um, Chris Harris from Gloucester was a very good player as well. 
Um, Louis Reece Samet, he was, you wouldn't believe how quick that guy is. Like, I thought I had him, and I was like, I have him, I have him, and he just burnt me around the other side. I was chasing my own tail, it was horrible. But yeah, probably those guys are the standouts for me. And who would you say in Ulster training is one of the toughest players to come up against? Um, <clears throat> Mikey Laurie, because you just know he'd probably turn you inside out. Um, McCluskey, very hard to tackle. Just puts his hand on your face and bumps out of contact. Marcel, obviously. Nick Temeny is hard to tackle. Ethan Macro has got good feet as well. So, you know, there's a lot of lot of good players. <coughs> um, and uh, sometimes I would hate to be the opposition trying to tackle them as well. Wouldn't be easy. Um, then we'll flip that question around. And then who would you say is the best player you've played alongside? Uh... It's a tough one. I right, see. Uh, obviously, Mads is his experience is ridiculous because he's he's obviously played so long, and he's he's been there, done that, in different countries and everything. So, I love I love playing against alongside Mads because he just he knows what to say, he knows what to do, so you kind of feel comfortable, and obviously you get on really well. So you know we're not afraid to have those small chats with each other. Um, Stu McCloskey's great to play with is he's just an absolute animal like um, yeah probably those two. Well, at the minute like you know I've only played Ulster Irish 20s was I played with Keelan Doris at Irish 20s and he's an absolute freak like he's so good um, so hard to tackle leader big guy nice guy as well so yeah probably those two I'll go with <laughs> You've achieved quite a lot in your career. You've made a European quarter final against Toulouse, and you've made a Pro 14 final. Um, if you had to pick one standout memory though from any time in your rugby, what would you choose? Uh, probably that Pro 14 final try. That was just like, you know, I'd played Pro 14 and and stuff before, but I'd just kind of been there. Not like I've maybe did a couple of things to stand out but that was the first time like on the big stage that like I really put a name down put a marker down on my name so that was probably a great highlight and then obviously uh, lower sixth Scottish Cup final it was a good one when I um, that try at the end of the game it was a great memory again that was something I'd love to remember but it was again it was just a blur to be honest but that was probably one of, that was one of the best moments <clears throat> happened so fast it's exactly all I remember is like just running and the posts were there and I just remember like everything was just like blurry I was just running for my life like horrible what's your favourite away ground to play at? Um, Murray feels great um, I'd love to be in Murrayfield with like a, a, a full stadium because the both times we've played there, it's been obviously completely empty. Um, Thurman Park, <coughs> Monsters Grounds, great stadium, and uh, the Toulouse Stadium is pretty cool. Because they obviously had fans when we were there, so the noise was crazy. The pitch was class as well. They like to make a lot of noise. I remember when Claremont were here. It was it was the middle of winter, and they all had their tops off in Belfast. <laughs> you, were look, you were looking at them waving playing air horns and you're like it's the middle oh, of the ground had those things you know that the, the swing round mm -hmm. the, yeah they, yeah. they had, I think everyone in Toulouse had those it was ridiculous now we'll change that a wee bit what's your least favourite ground to play at were the cha were changing rooms even are they crammed compared to whom uh, Sports ground, Connaught's not really a nice place to go to. <coughs> Rodney Parade, Dragons ground, the, the change rooms are a box, literally a box. And then the pitch as well isn't great. Um, where is that? Bridge End, where all sprays play when they're not at the Liberty. 
um, it's like it's basically like an all out of league pitch with like poor to capital changers. It's horrible. <laughs> Only those three, I'd say. And then we spoke about this wee bit earlier on, but if you didn't become a professional rugby player, what, what would you have become? It's a tough one. Uh, I'd probably, well, I probably would be just finishing uni. Um, I don't know what I would have done. Uh, my last year in school, I did well fifth year and lower sixth, and my last year results dropped a wee bit, so I don't actually know what I'd be doing. Um, great question. I have to think about that. I'll get back to you. <laughs> well, don't worry about time because we're on to the final question. Um, if you could choose five past or present players that you've played with or against to play alongside you in a six-a-side team, who would you choose and why? Um, I have to go mad. It's like, you know, he, he, he put me in his, I put him in mine. A uh, great player to play with. Um, I go... I'm trying to think positional wise. Go with I'd have to go Marcel as well. Um as I've said, he's a great guy as well. Like you wouldn't think he is you know, you think he's constantly wired in, but he's so nice and so soft, but he's an absolute monster in the field and his mentality is is ridiculous. I'd have McCluskey beside me. Just like a bo- big bodyguard for you. Um, obviously, really experienced as well. Um, great guy. Um, how many is that? One, two, three. Um, and I have Mikey Laurie with me. Just because I've been obviously with him from first year and he's still there now. He's obviously doing really, really well. Great feat. You know, he has, he has everything. Um, and then I'll go for a forward. I'll just go from Ulster because, to be fair, I don't really, I don't know what like you know players are played against. I wouldn't yeah. be too sure about who to pick. Um, I'll go. Go Tom O'Toole. Go Tom. He's um, he's going to be be up there with it in the Irish setup, obviously again and. Um, Yet again, he's one of those guys who is uh, he's one of our best mates and he's he's so nice and funny and soft, but he's when he gets on the pitch he just has this like flick of mentality where he turns into like a, a psychopath. Um and he's a cracking player with huge potential as well. So yeah, I'll go with those six. Uh, honorable mansions will be Karen Treadwell. I'm going I'm going to ask you one more thing. What would your aims and ambitions be with Ulster this season? Oh, it's a tough one with Europe and stuff because the way everything's, you don't know what's going to happen with, uh, oh, yeah, well, you know, Pro 14 is obviously <laughs> the final is going to be, that's going to be our, our aim. If we can get all these games played and stuff, then we want to be you know, get a couple of bonus points in the next couple of games and hopefully get to the top of the table. Um, Europe, I think we're in Challenge Cup, so that could be a huge stepping stone to get us. You know, we maybe didn't perform those at Toulouse and Gloucester game. Um, it was an unfortunate game. Yeah, yeah. the Toulouse was, you know, we, it was the same kind in both games. It was just penalty count and giving them easy access. The exact same as the Leinster game last week. Just uh, give them easy access to 22. And then, you know, when you have European teams like that, who can mole and uh, are food strong. So, um, yeah, I think the Challenge Cup, if, if we could win that, that would be a huge booster to go on and do, you know, Champions Cup next season again and really put a best foot forward. Um, yeah, that Rainbow Cup would be, I think that would be a great challenge, especially South African teams are, we're so strong and they'll be fired up going into that Lions tour so yeah that'll be a great challenge um, you know if we could win that or do very well in that that'll be great um, I, I just think with Ulster at the minute like we have so many young players like you looked at Leinster last week they had I think their whole 15 had been capped by Ireland 
and you know we had the you look at the difference in Ulster squad and Leinster squad they've got one of the biggest squads probably I've ever seen you look at Ulster there's that difference as well you have to think about and with Ulster to be up competing with that level you know when you look at a few seasons ago you and I don't think I would imagine Ulster being in a Pro 14 final and yeah it's amazing and you look at the players playing, like, you know, Tom started that game, Mikey, me, um, like, just so many, and Ethan was playing that game of the weekend, and so many young players who, who have so much potential, like, we're still only learning and getting older, like, it's only 22, and then the A's played last night, and, you know, the amount of players there that have the potential to be playing with, uh, with the first team as well at Ulster, ridiculous like Bill Johnson had an absolute blinder and Dave McCann was unbelievable so like you know I think it's going to be you know we obviously want to win stuff and we want to be competing and I think we can but like the next maybe three or four years will be where we'll be like up there you know really really doing it um, and like I'm not saying now that we can't do that now because we, we can we have a great squad we can win things uh, but the amount of young people we have coming up, we can get that together, uh, moulded, and that would be amazing. Well, that's me finished up. Well, thank and thank you very much for taking the time to do this interview. It's been great speaking to you. Absolute pleasure, man. And you know, you keep it up as well as I said to you before. Um, you're only 15, and you're getting into this stuff so early, and you're running it very professionally. So um, keep it up, and obviously, I'll, I'll say to a couple of the lads if you want to interview them as well. And, you know, you can keep doing what you're doing.